Hello and welcome to my playthrough of WWF Royal Rumble for the SNES. Yes, the Rainbow of Death, but uh, don't worry kids, this is actually a pretty decent game. You know, and if you don't want to spend 20 plus minutes on a playthrough, you know, there's the review which I'll probably link you know, in the description or put it in an embedded link or whatever the case may be. Anyways, uh, we're going to play through the tournament mode. We're going to play as Ric Flair, because of course we are. And uh, basically, the tournament mode is your uh, championship mode, where you pick a wrestler and you fight all the other wrestlers and you win the championship. Or attempt to win the championship by beating all the wrestlers. So we're going to start with Ted DiBiase here. Uh, there's not much to it. My strategy is just doing a lot of suplexes, which... In a game that involves, you know, grappling a guy and then mashing a bunch of buttons to fill a meter, you, you know, there is quite a bit, <laughs> there's quite a bit of strategy. It doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it, you know, it's a pretty effective means. So we're doing suplexes of all kinds, and you don't want to do a suplex near the ropes because if you do, I'm going to find that out. Oh, a little close up. Be mindful of your ring presence. Oh, there you go. If you do a suplex on, near the ropes, you both go down because the ropes bounce. Which I thought was a, was a nice little touch. You know, because it means you just you have to be mindful of your ring presence. Anyways, uh, WWF Royal Rumble is the second game in the series of LGN published WWF games for the 16-bit consoles. The first being the... Uh, prototypical, shall we say, Super WrestleMania, and the third game being WWF Raw, which uh, has more varied stats amongst the wrestlers, and also Mega Moves, which I never really cared for, and also, once in a blue moon, I would be able to pull off, so this is why we're going with Royal Rumble, because out of the three games, I kind of liked that better. There was also Rage in a Cage on the Sega CD, but... That one only had the steel cage, didn't have much in, in terms of modes, which, uh, anyways. Anyways, this is me trying to pull off a uh, figure four, which is some weird button. Ah, oh, there we go. Ah, oh, there we go. Figure four. But uh, the one thing I hate about this game, you try to put a submission maneuver, you know, you can only pin. Anyways, here's... Me trying to pull off the figure four once more. It's some weird button combination that, you know, recording the audio after the fact, I completely forgot. I think it involves holding the trigger buttons and pressing A or X or one of those buttons. In any event, we win a pinfall. The, the myth of the figure four is shattered in this one match, in this one game. But that's okay because Bret Hart has the sharpshooter and you can't make anybody tap out with that move either. Or actually, that's the wrong era of wrestling. The tap out came in later and that was brought in by EC. Most people submitted. Anyways, we're up to uh, Randy Savage. It was pretty much the same thing. A lot of these guys, you know, pretty much the... Uh, when it comes to the basic move sets, all these wrestlers pretty much have the same basic moves. The only real difference being the uh, finishers. So, you know, Flair has his uh, figure four. Bret Hart has his sharpshooter. Uh, Macho Man, I think, has the elbow drop. You know, they, uh, you know, some of these moves do change. You know, he got a little headbutt for good measure. And um, there's also cheating moves if the referee is down or during a uh, brawl. Which is more of like a street fight, no holds barred type of match. You could do uh, eye rakes and choking. But I'm not going to do that here. Here's me attempting a figure four and failing miserably. I'm trying to trying to get to find a proper combination. Anyways, not, there's not much to the gameplay for the most part. There we are. Here's, uh, we're trying to go for figure four, failing miserably. Ah, there we go. Figure four. I think the goal was trying to get at least one figure four in there. Doesn't matter if I can't win the match with the figure four. But, uh, try to get one in there because I guess that's customary. I have a finisher in there. And then at some point I just gave up. 
So anyways, that's another match for uh, the nature boy. Yeah, I can't do it. I can't do the woo. Woo! Woo! -wee. Okay. No, we're gonna stop that now, please. Okay, we're off with uh, Mr. Perfect. Fun fact. Mr. Perfect beat Ric Flair in a Loser's Leave Town match to send Ric Flair back to WCW. For better or worse, I guess. I don't know. You'll have to decide that ultimately. Uh, anyways. Going for a pinfall. A little early. Showing off a nice variety of uh, different moves. So it's not always the suplex. You want to try and vary that up a bit. And the Super Nintendo controller has a good number of buttons. Ooh. Uh, I thought that that would have went through, but, you know, just skim the ropes and, uh... That's a bad idea. It's not bothering with the figure four. I just, like, at some point, I decided, do I go for the figure four? No. Because the figure four does fuck all. You know, it's good for a finisher, but it doesn't actually finish because you can't tap anyone out and that sort of thing. That's something that they fixed with Raw. You know, if you put a submission move, a uh, submission move on a uh, downed opponent, you know, and his and meter goes out, you know, he uh, submits. You know, which you really can do that. Now it starts to be a bit of a struggle. Now it starts to feel like a bit of a struggle. Know, to try and get that meter filled on your side. But of course, you know, once you dwindle his uh, energy down a bit, it becomes uh, somewhat less of a struggle, but it uh, doesn't get too, 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 not, you know, it does get a little tougher. You know, there is an increase in the difficulty. Uh, I don't know if I should include the Royal Rumble as a separate video, because I did a couple of those, you know, just for a lark before I started on the tournament mode, but, uh... I don't know, we'll save that for another video, I guess. Just to get some semblance of mileage. It's a pretty fun game. It's not one that, you know, it, it's it's not the deepest game ever. It's not like a Fire Pro or anything like that, but, you know, it, it's, it's good for a lark. It's, you know... You know, every once in a while I don't mind playing a somewhat... Uh, I don't want to say it's a mediocre game, but because it honestly really isn't. There's something therapeutic, I guess, of, of something. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyways, you know, Ric Flair over the Undertaker, and uh, fun fact. And now we're up against Brett in round five of the championship. So if it, uh, I'm curious to see. Mind you, pre-recorded. It's been like a, a yeah. It's it's like I'm. It's pretty evident, sure, but, uh, you know, this is recorded long after the fact. You know, I did the playthrough and on just dubbing it, I think it was a couple of weeks later, so I don't even remember, so it's, like, brand new. But we're going back to the, uh, the suplex strategy. Try to keep it in the middle of the ring. And, um, and sometimes you can break out of the grapples, you know, atomic drop. I think it's supposed to be a backbreaker or something. I guess. Some of these moves look weird in 2D. I guess, I guess it's just me being used to the, uh, the more recent iterations of wrestling games. Even if it's my only real exposure is WWE's, but... Eh, it is what it is. Yeah, you imagine a wrestling match. Who? <laughs> imagine something like that, an atomic drop. You know, there's a steel chair outside, and you know, there's also a bucket. If you go, to, if you go out, you know, outside the ring, uh, you could use those as weapons. I almost never do because I never f find much of a use for them. And here's me trying to do the figure four before I just gave up futilely and I'm just gonna pin him. I guess well, I'm gonna try again, I guess. Oh, there we go. <coughs> yeah, we're not doing that again. 
<sighs> so, uh, yeah, Ric Flair over Bret Hart. In another universe, this would be a title match, and Flair would retain. Uh, which wouldn't mean much, but there you go. So now it's Rick versus Yoko. I almost forgot Yoko was in this game, but there you go. I'm drinking coffee. As if you really need me to spoil the illusion that this is a playthrough that I'm actually playing it, which I'm not. I think it's a, it's fairly evident that... Uh, anyways. Now here's where it really starts to be a bit of a struggle here. You know, I actually saw. I, I I think I was inspired to pick to start playing this again after watching that one playthrough with James and Mike, which was a complete uh, a complete surprise that the, they would actually pull this game out of their itinerary, because I didn't expect them to play a game like this, quite frankly. But uh, I saw them do a playthrough, a play of it you know, have a bit of fun with it, and I thought, eh, you know what, I have a copy of the game there, pull it out, play it a bit, and maybe try my luck at the tournament mode, because I figured why not. Um, the AI in this game, you know, even though it's a struggle to try and get the uh, the grapple meter, uh, not as hard as I thought it was going to be. I think... Uh, Again, I'm going to have to look up, but I've been practicing the Royal Rumble mode before I started the tournament. And I think I did one at difficulty 10, and I won that with flying colors, I guess. Or as what would pass as flying colors in a game like this. Uh, I paused for a moment here because I had to check on something. I think the dog wanted to... Uh, um, dog wanted to go for a walk, so I had to pause that. The pause is a little longer, but this being recorded on a DVD, I paused recording and, you know, continue where it left off. Uh, there might be a couple instances here and there where I would, you know, pause here and there, so just a little bit, bit of a heads up. But uh, that doesn't derail the Nature Boy, who probably won like 9 or 10 world titles at this point, I don't recall. But, uh, huh? Doing alright. And I got the figure four run to Yoko. Going on to Space Mountain, I guess. There you go. Mind you, Yokozuna could probably substitute for a Space Mountain. Actually, he was still relatively thin at this point. Not the gargantuan, uh, birth that he had, you know, later in his career. And, uh,. You know, I sh probably shouldn't speak ill of the dead, but I'm sorry. I'm a horrible human being. Not really. Um. <laughs> so now we're up against Tatanka, Buffalo. And uh, again, ooh, Tatanka got a move on me, Buffalo. Suplex on Tatanka. <laughs> ooh, a rare Irish whip and a clothesline. I... It is a rarity for me to nail a clothesline on anybody in this game. Which is why I generally don't go for an Irish whip. Ooh, and a drop kick. Oh, we're really showing off the moves here. Anyways, back to uh, Tatanka Buffalo out of the ring again. And we're trading the kicks. Pinfall, and that's not going to go for it. Another suplex, because, sure, why not? That's a backbreaker, I guess. I don't know if that was me escaping, or he just kicked out, or, I don't know. The pinfall attempt, kind of wonky, and we're just going to try again with the figure four. No, that's not going to go. It's a struggle with Tatanka, Buffalo. Atomic drop. Suplex. I just pinned a fucker. One, two, three. I got nothing. And we got Shawn Michaels. This is long before 
as many accolades, as many as many Hall of Fame matches as this was long before the drug problems, or did he already have the drug problems? I don't know. I can never tell. It all seems like the same thing. And again, it's a start, it starts off with a bit of a struggle trying to get the uh, the meter filled, and it only gets worse from here. So, but uh, yeah, headbutt for good measure, kicks. Because if you can't get a grapple in, you might as well just kick the fucker. Anyways, there's not really a whole lot to say here. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait till he gets up. <laughs> this was me trying to go for a running move, uh, changed my mind. A few knee, knee drops, which I think was more my attempt to try to do the figure four again. Because your finisher, you can only do your finisher when your opponent's meter is in the red. I'm going to go for another grapple because I figure why not. Yeah, whenever I'm trying to walk in front of the guy, it's because I'm trying to do a figure four. And there you go. Of course, the figure four, again, like I said, countless times, doesn't really do anything because you can't submit. You can't get your opponent to submit, but nonetheless, another step closer to Space Mountain. Ric Flair gains his revenge on Shawn Michaels for ending his career at WrestleMania 24, despite the fact that Flair went to TNA and had a few matches there, and the less said about that, the better. Please don't mention that again, please. It's terrible. Just... Hey, Crush! I almost forgot you were here. Oh, I shouldn't. I should probably not speak speak ill of the dead. I guess. Or is he still alive? I don't. I don't know. There's a lot of these old wrestlers that. You, there's a lot of them are like half dead and stuff, and then some of them are like all dead. You know, a lot of it. It's like it, it, it tends to be disheartening when you go back to when you've been watching wrestling for a long time, and mind you, I've only been watching since 98, but it's, it's like a lot of these guys you know, not a nice little clothesline there bouncing off the ropes, you know, you don't want to do that suplex close to the ropes mind you, any move where you're in close proximity to the ropes, you gotta be mindful of where, they, where the move lands because I think even I tried an atomic drop close to, to, close to the ropes and it bounced off But, uh, in any event. Like, this is where you, you start trying to mix up your offense a bit between grapple moves and strikes. Which doesn't seem like a whole lot, but... In any event. There you go. And the guy was dizzy I could have went for a grapple move, but, uh... Nice little headbutt for good measure. Vertical suplex. Nice little grapple move. Backbreaker. Oh, come on, I just want to get... I don't want to wait till the guy's meter's completely empty to do a fucking figure four. That's my mentality at this point. And then my mentality is just fuck it, just pin the fucker. And we're off. Ding, ding, ding. Indeed. I got Howard Finkel. Doesn't really say anything. He's just there for show. Or whenever they need they need someone to fill a slot in the um anyways. Ric Flair versus Razor Ramon. Round ten for the championship tournament match. Yay. So who's left? I don't remember then. Now it's a struggle. Now, now, now. If you thought it was a struggle before, now it's a fucking struggle. And the one thing I will say about Raw, at least, they did beef off the AI there. Uh, I'm almost tempted to try Rage in the Cage now. Because <laughs> I'd figure it'd be the same thing, although that one, eh, not really. That, and I'm not too thrilled at the prospect of, uh, 
having to play a championship mode where you have to wrestle 20 guys. I mean, I, I, I suppose it'd be an interesting endurance test, if nothing else. But just this is, is good enough for me. And I'm quite, you know, I'm actually looking at this again. And I'm probably thinking this when I was playing this. I was quite surprised that I got this far. I thought it would have been a hell of a lot harder. But uh, certainly not the case. Though, mind you, I, uh, you know, I thought the same way when I had that. When, uh, when one of my buddies loaned me his copy of uh, Steel Cage Challenge for NES. And I played, the, I think, the championship mode or tournament mode or whatever it was called. On that, and I, I, I was surprised by how relatively easy that was, to be quite honest. And I don't consider myself like a master gamer or any bullshit like that. Like, I'm not like a fucking expert or anything. But, uh, you know, I tend to be amazed when I go through a game, you know, with relative ease. Especially one that, in the case of Steel Cage Challenge, played like ass at times. This one plays a little better. And by a little better, I mean a hell of a lot better, though. You know, it's not the deepest thing, but then again... Never really concerned my thought with that. So now we got the final match. It's Ric Flair versus the Narcissist for the championship belt. Back when they called it belts and not championship titles. Belt is an evil word that should be stricken from the record. Along with terms like wrestlers and wrestling and women. Because there are no women in WWE. There are o only divas. But this was long before those days, so uh, completely irrelevant to this game. You know, and, and the narcissist Lex Luger is putting up a quite a bit of a fight. You know, as demonstrated by this really second-rate MMA fight. And, ooh, bad move there, Rick. Bad move. But yeah, this is where it really starts to be a struggle to fill that meter. Mashing buttons like a madman. Which would probably horrify any player of Fire Pro. Which I, I I played like a bit of Fire Pro at one point. Yeah, I got I got the one on PS2. Could never really get used to the control scheme. But you know, the one thing with that is that you you could create your own guys, and you just let the computer play it on, and it's like they make great, you know, visual exhibitions. For, for if, if if nothing else, so. Anyways, Luger's back in the ring. Uh, I, I guess I was going to go for like a running move, but we just went for a grapple. Or he initiated the grapple, I don't know. I don't remember. It's been a couple of weeks, ladies and gentlemen. I'm wondering who uh, the ref is supposed to be. If they if it's just somebody that they just made up for a lark, or if it's supposed to represent a proper ref that was in the company at the time. Can't really say. Off the top of my head. Oh! Figure four! In the red, and you see how much uh, energy uh, that sapped from Luger. So the win's academic. Ric Flair is champion. And there's the uh, title belt in all its glory. Pretty much, you don't get a close-up of the title, which would have been nice, but... You know what? I'll settle for the magazine cover. You know, WWF Magazine, New World's Champion, exclusive results inside, but you don't get to see the results. Uh, I guess this was before Vince Russo became the editor, and, 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 and or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't care. Anyways, that was WWF Royal Rumble SNES, the uh, playthrough of the tournament mode with uh, Ric Flair. Uh, I had fun playing this. Had fun doing this commentary for whatever it was worth. Uh. Might I might upload the Royal Rumble match along with it? Maybe, maybe not. Anyways, uh, that's that. Uh, hope you enjoyed or at least injured this video. Thanks for watching. Till next time. Take care. Good night. Uh, I gotta get going. So later.